Hi, everybody. My name is Curtis Wood. I'm the co-founder and CEO of B Mortgage App. We launched B to make home ownership more accessible and affordable for the average person. We're a team of purpose-driven stakeholder capitalists and believe it's not enough just to turn one dollar into two. We want to leave this place a little better than we found it. And what better way to do that than making home ownership more affordable for everyone? B is a mobile mortgage app that automates loan origination with AI, machine learning, and blockchain to decision data instead of a human loan officer, creating an exclusive mobile mortgage experience for the flood of first-time buyers who love personal finance apps such as Robinhood, Fair, Chime, and many others. My background is in mobile app development and mortgage lending as a licensed MLO or mortgage loan originator. I got the idea for B when I read a report by PricewaterhouseCoopers talking about the benefits of blockchain for the mortgage industry. That was my light bulb moment when I realized that this new technology could solve almost every pain point for both the customer and the lender, and more importantly, power a new mobile mortgage experience. So we started B and had a breakout year in 2020. Most of you watching this aren't connected to the hottest deals coming out of Silicon Valley. So stick around while we do a deep dive and hear from a panel of experts and you'll see why we have solved a $4 trillion industry and why this may be the closest you ever get to a baby unicorn. The $4 trillion mortgage market is the last frontier for disruption. Despite the fact that young first-time buyers are the largest home buying group, this $4 trillion market is the last segment that is yet to feel the impact of an Uber, of a Robin Hood, or a major improvement to the customer experience. The millennial share of the overall mortgage market is about 40%. This includes purchase and refi. Last year, they became the largest home buying group in America, and it's going to project, it's projected to grow. These mobile users are the dominant buying power, and they've moved away from traditional institutions their parents banked at. They've transitioned to mobile and are trusting socially conscious companies that do things differently, uh, ones that are meeting them where they are today in the digital world of mobile. They've realized that when it comes to money and personal finances, the old way of doing things is unnecessarily stressful and inefficient. This is why they're buying cars through a mobile app, because it's more convenient than spending hours at the dealership. Today's consumers want convenience, simplicity, and transparency when it comes to choosing a lender. This is why startups like Robinhood, Fair, and Chime have become so successful, despite competing in ultra-competitive markets against the largest banks and most established brokerage houses in the world. These companies have figured out how to design technology that helps their customers' lives, uh, makes it a little bit easier, helps to make their dollar go further. So why haven't these new mobile experiences made their impact on the mortgage industry. Decades of mortgage technology is designed for a human loan officer to process loan application data. By design, it is a very manually intensive process with the loan officer initiating key origination commands within the loan origination software. You've seen companies like Rocket Mortgage advertise their mobile app but the reality is that it's nothing more than a website used to complete paperwork for the same outdated process, in addition to a bunch of phone calls and harassment. Customers complain about the same things today that they did before Rocket Mortgage came along. This is proving the mortgage industry is yet to be disrupted by mobile. This is the current state of loan production today, manually intensive, and dependent on humans. Over the past five years, everyone in mortgage technology has tried to digitize the mortgage process, which has done little to improve the customer experience or become less dependent on humans to process digital loan application data. Rocket Mortgage, Blend, they digitized the loan application, the 1003, as many others have done. 
um, but it still doesn't have a mobile mortgage you can do entirely in the app or on your phone. That's because digitization isn't the answer. The solution is automation. This is what automation will do to the mortgage process. This is what B is building. It's a merged point of sale and loan origination software into a streamlined database controlled by the user via our mobile app with a super easy to use mobile interface. Think TurboTax for mortgages. So instead of a loan officer ordering credit, marking liabilities, verifying income and assets, selecting the loan product, pulling rates, running DU and LP, which is underwriting, clearing milestones, all of those steps and more will be initiated by the user via our app, not the loan officer. Then our automation will handle the rest of the process. All of this is done for a W-2 and a 1040 borrower without any loan officer involvement. And it will include a hard credit pull, not just a soft one like some lenders do that turn into a bait and switch. So why hasn't this been done by now? despite all the other advances in mobile technology. The reason for that is re-engineering current mortgage tech uh, for strictly mobile is like trying to re-engineer a faster horse instead of building a car, okay? This technological leap is what B is designing for a completely new mobile mortgage experience in response to con new consumer buying habits that want mobile or demanding mobile and we'll offer the first end-to-end -end mobile mortgage experience from home shopping to closing. And again, we're going to do all this by automating today's manual processes with AI, ML, and blockchain to validate the data instead of loan officers. So let's break down what the customer journey looks like. So home buying starts with thinking about buying a home, you know, maybe poking around on Zillow. Some start with their budget or loan options, but it all starts with just looking, you know, thinking about buying a house. In either case, B will provide tools allowing you to get a real personalized analysis to let you pick out a purchase price and a payment that's right for your budget. And all without hurting your credit or pressure from a loan officer or a salesperson. When you're ready to make an offer, uh, you'll need uh, to get pre-approved like normal to verify you qualify for the home you want. You'll be able to do that from your couch without submitting documents or the back and forth emails with the loan officer. That's because our approval and decisioning process is fully automated for W-2 borrowers, 1040 as well. It's faster, it's easier than how things are done, uh, you know, relying on human LO or processors to do it. B is essentially, again, a merged point of sale and loan origination software that's controlled by the user uh, via the app, not the loan officer, via the LOS. So, for example, the rate engine is automatically pinged once the required data points are captured um, to process a rate pull request instead of being manually input by the loan officer. This user interface is very simple as well. Uh, tends to be just basic yes or no questions. Um, I'm buying a home. Are you looking for a 30-year fix? Will it be your primary residence? Are you a first-time buyer? So on and so forth. So it doesn't really overwhelm the customer with a bunch of fields on the 1003 loan application data, which is a federal form, and it's as friendly as the federal government can make a form. So as the customers, uh, or as the customer answers these simple questions, the technology prepares their loan application, their 1003 for them on the back end, similar to how TurboTax prepares um, your tax papers and everything. And it, it, again, it's just simple questions. We do all the heavy lifting. Get your pre-approval letter. You can text it, email it, or that sort of thing. And the reason how this is all automated, you know, the technology works for credit approval. Credit, in, credit income and asset data is sourced directly from the vendors. An AI program scrapes or reads this data and then performs basic calculations for debt to income ratio and loan to value. This data is then run through a pre-coded smart contract that has been pre-coded with the minimum qualifying standards for the loan product 
that the user wants. For example, the 30-year fixed. So if the credit, the debt to income ratio, and the loan to value data is within the acceptable thresholds or the ranges, the smart contract auto executes and basically advances the file to the next step of running DU or LP, which is the automated underwriting engines. Again, this is something that's typically managed by a human loan officer, which we are automating. So once you've got a home under contract, uh, B is going to coordinate the rest of the process with appraisal, clearing title, getting the tax cert, final underwriting, all while you stay up to date in the app. Uh, you get full transparency uh, of your loan status, and you only need to get involved if something doesn't check out uh, as expected. There's a DM feature to chat with your mortgage expert. Um, that entire uh, chat history auto pops into the um, file notes within the loan origination software. The next is closing. Lastly, you'll e-close where all parties will virtually close, e-sign documents electronically. As, direct, as a direct lender, B will sell its loans to HUD HC's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, for an average of $7,500 per loan. Uh, our jumbo loans will go to other secondary market investors through our relationship with Florida Capital Bank. So how is B gonna compete with larger banks? You know, we're a small startup. So B is gonna compete, and we actually are competing with big banks, and we're acquiring customers right now. We're probably gonna pass 4,000 downloads tomorrow. I wanted to pass it by the time of this webinar, but it doesn't look like we're going to do it. Uh, we found a small part of the market where lenders aren't focusing a lot of ad spend on, and we are quickly building our user base of customers. Most lenders are not fighting for, or excuse me, most lenders are fighting for customers at time of pre-approval. When you're ready to get pre-approved, call B of A, call Rocket. We're capturing customers before that, when they're just getting started. Another part of our customer acquisition, acquisition strategy is our growing real estate agent distribution channel. These agents are looking for on-the-spot mortgage answers and access, and with fast pre-approvals, our agents will have a major competitive advantage of getting their offer in first before another buyer does in hot markets. You know, all without having to deal with a loan officer or risk losing touch with their buyer during the pre-approval process. Our app has been called a contactless mortgage assistant for real estate agents. Uh, this will produce recurring revenue for B, and along with our exclusive partnership with Domidocs, B has solved the problem of attrition. We're losing customer after the sale, and we've got multiple channels for returning customers. When it comes to pre-approval, some lenders can pre-approve a borrower in 30 minutes or an hour, just depends. Otherwise, it can take up to seven days, just depending on the circumstance. With our automation, we can make a decision in as little as three minutes for a single borrower with a W-2. This, is, uh, this patent pending tech is going to automate up to 70% of the credit approval process uh, letting us 3x our production capacity. As you know, a more efficient process means money and time savings. This is a win-win for both borrower and lender. The B team is uniquely qualified to pull this off. Uh, where a lot of Silicon Valley techies have failed, uh, this team is backed by a team experienced in mobile app development, two licensed mortgage loan originators, two licensed real estate agents, one of the top patent attorneys in the country, a seasoned chief financial officer, and my partner, and the guy that couch surfed, uh, Matt Offers, uh, VP of Products, uh, real world project manager experience. He rolled out another uh, blockchain uh, mortgage product in the post close space. Uh, in addition, our automation engineers are out of MIT, the University of Chicago, just really the smartest guys. Uh, those guys aren't in, in terms of software engineering architecture. So last year we partnered with Florida Capital Bank. This is our mortgage lead customer who we sell mortgage leads to. Millennial Title is an investor and an integration partner. Far Shore is a development partner 
who built um, the app that's live right now. Molto Marketing is our ad agency uh, responsible for growing our fast-growing user base. And again, Elfi, these are the MIT guys uh, who are designing the automation architecture. So the current live app, the first version, is an easy-to-use mortgage calculator that helps new buyers find their ideal purchase price and payment that's right for their budget. It was released on time and under budget last year, which was a breakout year for the B team. Uh, again, we also signed a partnership with Florida Capital Bank. We started generating mortgage leads and revenue, uh, completed a pre-seed round, kicked off a seed round with WeFunder, all in a 12-month period. Overall, not bad for a first-time startup. In closing, this is where we've been. This is what we accomplished in 2020. Our current WeFunder raise will fund our growing user base and the development of our core technology, which is currently in design and development. This is the auto core automation tech needed to power three-minute pre-approvals. It's also the automation tech needed for refinances as well. We'll be demoing this for Second Century Ventures, the venture capital arm of the National Association of Realtors in Q4 of this year. We'll also be going through a multi-million dollar Series A round at that time. So let's go ahead and meet our panel. Um, up first is Cutler Nup. Um, he's got global management experience in corporate development, M&A, and exit. Uh, Cutler joined Haskell to lead their venture arm, Disrupt Tech. Since launch, Disrupt Tech has uh, successfully built a portfolio including B Mortgage apps and AEC investments in the built worlds, including blocks, uh, advanced navigation, um, LP and brick and mortar, and collectively deployed 25 million plus in early stage ventures. Next up is the recipient of a new Hawaiian tan, Steve Wagner with Battalion Group. Uh, he has 35 years of mortgage banking experience, including senior management roles at Freddie Mac for 12 years, leading um, two of the largest consumer-facing platforms in the 90s, five years leading correspondent uh, lending sales teams for a top 10 investor, uh, 10 years warehouse lending, first managing client relationships, and serving as the bank workout officer for the warehouse program. And for the past three years, Steve has served as mortgage technology consultant for a variety of companies, big and small, uh, small from regional uh, independent mortgage bankers to Capital One and First American. And he has traveled the world uh, consulting in Egypt and for the government of India. Welcome, Steve. And our third panelist is Brian Handel, uh, Senior Vice President of Wells Fargo. He's a 33-year 33, 33 veteran of the real estate finance industry, a certified mortgage banker, and he's previously a uh, certified mortgage banking society chairman, a long-tenured instructor uh, for the MBA School of Mortgage Banking, the master faculty, and he's developed and delivered training, mortgage banking training materials all over the world. He recently celebrated his 15th anniversary at Wells Fargo as Senior Vice President, Division Sales Manager, and Correspondent Lending. So welcome, guys. So I know we're, I know we're going to open this up to a QA, and a and it looks like we have our first question. And let me pull this closer. Because maybe I'm getting ahead of the presentation, but where does blockchain come in? Fannie Mae isn't using blockchain. Credit reporting is not on blockchain, so the blockchain piece seems to be all internal facing. So we're using blockchain to validate, for example, the three data points of the credit approval process that a loan officer right now is normal, normally validating. This will be your median credit score, uh, your income that's sourced uh, directly from the work number, and then your assets, which are sourced through uh, uh, account check form free. Um, you know, or Finlock or somewhere like, somewhere like that. So instead of having a loan officer read these data points, we're having AI scrape the data, perform some DTI and LTV calculations, and then a smart contract. We're pumping them through a pre-coded smart contract 
just say for a 30 year fixed. And if it meets the minimum qualifying standards, the file is, advances to the next line. Um, so that's what we're replacing it with. And I hope that answered your question. We have another question here. The B Mortgage app is free. So how does B make money? So our current mortgage app is free, correct? And it is a mortgage lead generating platform. And if you apply for a mortgage with our banking partner, Florida Capital Bank, they pay us for the mortgage lead. Uh, we recently passed, well, we might have passed 4,000 downloads today. I'm not sure, uh, but most likely it'll be tomorrow. So we make money right now by selling mortgage leads to Florida Capital Bank. And we're strategically doing that because this is capturing a user base while we build out the rest of the mortgage app. And once the mortgage app is live and we transition to becoming a, de a direct lender ourselves, we'll just keep this sales funnel. We'll turn it into us instead of diverting it away to Florida Capital Bank and just originate the loans ourselves. When we become a direct lender, we will sell our loans to Fannie and Freddie for an average of $7,500 a piece. And that fluctuates, but that is an average. Um, with our automation, being able to automate uh, up to about three times production capacity, we're estimating we'll be able to originate a loan and acquire a customer at a third of the cost of other lenders, no matter what the rate environment is. And a few more questions. For the three for the three investors, what's the biggest aspect of B Mortgage that pays the way? Oh, this is for you guys. So the question is for our panel as investors, what's the biggest aspect of B Mortgage that paved the way for you to invest? Brian, go ahead and start first. <clears throat> well, there's uh, there's a couple things there, Curtis. Uh, the first is the is the simplicity that the B app provides. It enables you know your 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 average uh, homeowner or first time home buyer to understand the questions that are you know uh, that need to be answered. But they're in, in plain English and they're truncated, and it it takes literally minutes to understand where you are relative to um, qualifying or pre qualifying. And then the second thing for me is, and I saw this early on when we first started talking, was it, it's applicable really to anybody. So whether you're a loan officer for a bank or a mortgage company, whether you're a realtor or whether you're a consumer, the, the, the easy way to figure out whether you qualify or whether your client qualifies, it, it's literally two or three minutes. Cutler? Yeah, I'd agree with all those points. I'd, I'd, I'd also add for us, I mean, uh, the opportunity that, um, you know, you're approaching and your vision for where you were taking B, Curtis, was uh, was a big thing for us and in, in believing in what, what you can do. And obviously, you know, your resume and your team's resume that you put together from experience um, in the trenches and having done, uh, done this and been on several sides of the table and who you're bringing and who you're partnering with as well um, was a big decider for us, obviously, from, from a corporate perspective. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the opportunity at hand and the way you're simplifying the process that others are, um, you know, finding patchwork in ways to kind of represent the simplicity that B is going to bring to the market. But what you guys are really building is, is going to transform, um, you know, and, and automate uh, the process that that is as cumbersome as it is today. So Steve? Well, I've, I've looked at a lot of mortgage technology and very little of it is transformative. Much of it is taking what we do on paper or did on paper because I've been in this business long enough to have done it on paper and automating it by putting in blocks to be filled in on a screen instead of blocks to be filled in on a piece of paper. And that's not automation and that's not transformative. The first engagement I had with B was illustrative of how you are transforming the process. And what you said in the video that really brings, I think brings it home most effectively is for the consumer. If you have a consumer who is a W-2, 1040 borrower, so they receive a regular paycheck with maybe a bonus, but they, they're not self-employed, they don't have the complexities that go with that, um, they will be able to go from shopping for a home to closing on a mortgage without having to engage the number of people that have to engage today. People, 
add time to the process. But the one person they won't engage is the loan officer. I have nothing against loan officers. But the skill set of a loan officer is not necessary for a 75% cash out refinance transaction being done by somebody who is a W-2 um, and, and salary borrower. You don't need the, the loan officer's one point commission added to the cost of that loan. And so I, I always look for ways in our industry to squeeze cost out of the process and drive down the ability for more people to, to afford homes, to afford home financing. This does that. And most of the mortgage tech that I've looked at doesn't. Yeah, and to kind of take off on what Steve just said, really everybody has digitized the mortgage process, but they've digitized just a very manually intensive process. And it, it still requires you know, a ton of human capital. It's not automation. You can digitize something, but who cares if a human still has to move it from point A to point B? Uh, let's go to the next question. I'm curious if this technology can be licensed to other lenders. It seems like the tech would be very beneficial for other lenders who could adopt this to streamline the process. So let me answer that question with a question. Should Robinhood have licensed their tech to Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, E-Trade, Scott Trade, should FAIR and Carvana have licensed their tech to Ford and GM dealerships? Should Chime, mobile banking, have licensed their tech to Wells Fargo, to B of A? The answer is no. There was an entire generation, and they're still there. These are young people who are eager to do things in new ways on their phone. But yes. We could license this out, but everyone we have talked to up till now has slammed the door in our face on innovation because they are stuck in the old ways of doing things. And Brian or Steve, I don't know if you want to jump in on that one, but feel free. Go ahead, Brian. I, 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 I think you used some great, great analogies, particularly with Chime and Carvana. Right. I mean, you, you know, 10 years ago, nobody would have said, yeah, I'm going to buy my car from a vending machine. <laughs> but, and, that, and now here we are where we, there, there's demand. You know, the yeah. consumers are educated. They know what they want. They don't need to, to pay an extra fee to interact with a person. And so they're just executing on the transaction. Yeah. And, and the other thing I would say as far as licensing it out is. Um, the doors got slammed in your face because you couldn't plug into their existing technology and their existing processes. That's right. why what you're doing is transformative and what has been done to date has not been. Yeah. Somebody likened it, you know, if it was B of A, they likened it to trying to turn the Titanic. Um, it'd have to go through 15 committees. People would have to vote themselves out of jobs. Um, if, if Jeff Bezos would have taken the idea of selling books to Books a Million on Amazon back in 1997, they would have laughed him out of the building. You know, this is, this is really just the way disruption happens. Um, Cutler and I talk frequently about why Rocket Mortgage doesn't do this. And it's because they're, in, they're the top dog. They're, they're at the top of the mountain. They're going to run out their number one spot for as long as they can. And when we get there, we're going to do the same thing. It's interesting they would have chosen the Titanic. I would have gone with a ship that didn't sink. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, the blockchain, next question, has the blockchain technology already been implemented? The answer is no. We are building out the overall um, tech stack. The first part of the app, which is live now, was actually the easiest part. Plus it was a, rev a revenue generating um, piece of the app. So that was released first. We are currently about a week away from uh, completing the design process with the Elfie guys. And these are the guys out of MIT, the University of Chicago, and they're designing the automation architecture. Um, any kind of smart contract reliance is really just a small piece uh, in the overall um, uh, automation uh, of the technology. Next question, what are some of the risks associated with using B for loan seekers and how do you plan to help potential users overcome that? Um, I, I'd like to know 
uh, what aspect of risk you're talking about. If it's data security, our data will be secured uh, according to banking standards. So what other kind of risk could that question be talking about? <clears throat> Got any ideas, panel? <clears throat> well, yeah, I, I, I would say, you know, what one of the other um, you know, intriguing things about the way B is the B app is set up is that you're you're getting an indication of what you may or may not qualify for, uh, you know, as a as a home buyer. Um, and th the important thing to know is that for B, you're not actually taking an application. You're providing enough information to get a, an indication, and yeah. there, you know, you're not crossing the line of actually taking an application, which legally requires you to finish the application and and uh, disposition the loan, whether it's approved or denied. And somewhere between 25 and 30% of loans are denied. And when those loans are denied, you have to physically disclose to the consumer you know, why it was denied and that it was denied. So I think that's an important, uh, I think it's an important distinction from a risk mitigant perspective. I also think one of the most powerful things that you've designed and the way you refer to it in the video whenever I talk to you about it is the, the like making your process akin to TurboTax. Not that that was your goal, but the, to, to have something out there that feels familiar to people. For anyone who hasn't used TurboTax, you answer a series of really logical questions that are very easy to answer. And behind the scenes, without you seeing it, your tax form is being completed. Every single other piece of mortgage technology presents to you on the screen a series of questions that fill in the boxes on the document Brian just referred to. We call it the 1003 in the industry, the Uniform Residential Loan Application. That document, whether it's electronic or paper, triggers the need to disclose. The B process does not trigger the need to disclose until the document is actually complete. There are steps in the process of completing the document, if you do it the old way, that trigger the need to disclose. Disclosing is expensive and you can make mistakes. And if you don't have to do it, you're not going to make mistakes and you're saving money up front. All right, next question. How many users are downloading the app per day? Anywhere from 50 to 100, uh, just depending on the day. But we have seen a spike over the past two to three weeks. And, you know, we're hoping it's just from brand awareness. Um, again, we should have 4,000 tomorrow, which I'm thrilled about. Uh, Cutler and I, when we were doing our projections, we just didn't think we'd have 4,000 downloads about five months after launch. Uh, follow up question How are these users hearing about the app? So I am reluctant to say how we're advertising because we have found a very small part of the market where a lot of ad dollars are not being focused by the bigger banks like Rocket and B of A. And to be honest with you, we're cleaning up in the channel. So we're going to keep that as our little secret and um, hopefully nobody else finds out about it. <laughs> I know there's some mortgage guys on this call. So <laughs> uh, let's see here. Follow up on the blockchain question. The answer makes sense, but the work number and credit data usually come in XML. So what's the value of the smart contract? Unless someone else, say a third party, can use that smart contract, just seems like the AI could store the data in a relational database and you'd have the same result. But would you trust it? Why do lenders employ a loan officer to validate data that they have to accept as is? Okay. You either have a median credit score that's in the acceptable range for the loan product you want, or you don't. It's either 620 and you can go Fannie, and if it's 619 or below, you've got to go something else. So why are lenders employing and paying loan officers six figures a year to validate data points that they cannot change? There is no gray area with this data. The reason why is because lenders don't trust a computer program to do a human's job. The risk profile of lending is too significant to disclose a wrong LE, to disclose a wrong rate, and have to make a business decision that could possibly cost the lender tens of thousands of dollars, okay? 
The difference is while you may not trust a computer program, you can trust a decentralized, a decentralized data validation protocol of a smart contract. The reason why is because the smart contract only gets encrypted data and it doesn't even know the data that it's looking at. So there are no biases, there's, there's no human error or no human element involved in the decisioning of the data. Startup Hut, love the questions, keep them, uh, don't read that one. What do you guys expect to have be a fully functioning app for the average home buyer? We're rolling out uh, automated pre-approvals in quarter four of this year. And at that point, we will technically be able to accept a 1003, process it, uh, which is a loan application in quota rate. So it's, we will have the capability to do it then. Um, when we go live as a lender, it's going to be determined on how this cap raise goes. And obviously, if we have more dry powder to devote to rolling out uh, us being a direct lender or, you know, allocating to a strictly development. Um, but our development goalpost is top priority, and that would be the ability to demonstrate for any venture capitalist or any large lender our automation tech, the ability for us to do a hard credit pull, to verify income and assets all within about three minutes, all from the phone. You never have to talk to a loan officer. We think that's going to be the most significant milestone that we can hit. So we set that as a goal, our goalpost for, you know, 12 months from now. That was three months ago, so nine months from now. And that's what we're shooting for. What is the revenue picture right now? And what does it look like as much as you're allowed to speak on it as far into the future as you can realistically see? So thankfully for all of my investors, I am not in charge of our finances. We have a very qualified chief financial officer to do that. Um, to answer your question, there is some revenue forecasting on our WeFunder Wefund, page. And past that, um, I, I'm, we're not really doing anything with revenue right now. Uh, we are in revenue, but uh, this meeting, I don't have any revenue information. Just go to WeFunder. Uh, let's see here. Is there a thought about selling the technology and platform to other lenders, credit unions like the LMA model? You know, anything's for sale for the right price. That's going to return a uh, nice value to this panel and my other partners, you know, investors. So we're going to be looking, I, I believe in color. I'm going to have you jump in here in just a minute. I believe we'll start to get some uh, decent, you know, and this would be serious engagement for an exit whenever we're able to demonstrate our automation and how we are completely different and better, you know, from Brock and Mortgage and everybody else. And again, that would be about nine months from now. Um, Color may be able to add some commentary to that from his standpoint. Yeah, I mean, from from the perspective of, uh, you know, selling the technology, I mean, getting it to a point where um, where it would make sense to do that. I mean, uh, you know, I believe the B team has options when it when it comes down to the direction that they'll want to take. And I think, uh, as you alluded to, Curtis, I think it depends on uh, a lot of where the t uh, where, you know, you are with the product and where you are with, um, you know, can, uh, future raises as well, um, that, you know, kind of depend on that and, and who also uh, participates there as well. Because, um, you know, if this, uh, if the interest you've been generating to date is a forecast of the future, which um, hopefully it will be, uh, you know, you're generating uh, lots of good interest from the right parties that are considering this strategically for their um, well-established businesses um, as well. So um, lots of opportunity in the future. Yeah. And if, People ask me all the time what what my long term goal with the company is. I'm I'm a mortgage guy. I I enjoy mortgages. Now there's you know as much as I'm a mortgage professional, the other half of me needs to be going like 100 miles an hour with my hair on fire, which is what running a startup is like. So you know I I see myself. This is in a perfect world. I would love to take this company public. Say five ten years from now, ring the bell. You know, that's that's challenging and exciting for me. Cynthia might kill me 
if one day we wake up, you know, with a couple million dollars in our bank account and I don't have a job, she'd kick me out of the house and tell me to go do something. So I, I love this. And this is what hopefully I'll be doing for a while. Uh, let's see here. This is a question for the panel from a professional investor standpoint. What's been most impressive about B? Brian? <clears throat> well, I, I, you know, I, I, I just think that the approach to simplification has, has really been unmatched. And I, you know, I've, I've been doing this you know, for 33 years. You know, my, my blood, sweat, and tears has been in mortgage banking, and I think the simplification of it is beautiful. And as well as, as I mentioned before, you know, just the ability to, for loan officers, realtors, consumers to understand what people do and do not qualify for without having to disclose and to do it on your phone while you're standing in the grocery line at the, at the store. You know, so it, it's just, it's just really simple and, you know. I would echo that and, and there's a, another thought on it. 25 years ago, Brian and I worked together to sell to a recalcitrant industry, something called automated underwriting. And everybody was terrified. Brian and I worked together at Freddie Mac and we were the top two salespeople for loan prospector in the whole company. And everybody was afraid in the industry, this is going to make me fire my underwriters. I love my underwriters, they're wonderful people and I don't want to fire my underwriters and I don't want things done by machine. And what we kept telling people and what has proven to be true is this is not going to replace your underwriters. It's going to make your underwriter more effective and release their capabilities. Underwriting is part art and part science. We got the science part now in this machine. And now you can have your artists paint the palette for the loans that need it. What, what impressed me about B the most, this is automated application and no one has done it to date. It felt very, very much to me. I get the same feeling from this. I got when, the, when Brian and I sat in on the first meeting and they said, this is the thing called Loan Prospector and this is what we're doing. I had a similar feeling about this. And I've seen nothing in the intervening 25 years that gave me that feeling. Well said. I'd hit all those points and then just hammer home the, the context that uh, the two of you just added to that at the, uh, at the expertise of the folks that, um, you know, Curtis, you brought to the table and the, and the team and your advisors as well. Uh, having been in the mix really gives uh, gives me and uh, you know the in, an investor the confidence that that I need to understand that you know you guys know the problem in and out. Uh, you've demonstrated with the technology that you know you're you're executing on your roadmap and uh, yeah, it's exciting because it's it's a, it's a big market you're attacking. When I say what I'm about to say, I mean no disrespect to the company about whom I'm going to say it. But when I talk about B, the question I am most frequently asked is how is this different from Rocket? There is an industry saying about rocket mortgage because their technology stops short of where b goes and the saying is push button get phone call <laughs> as simple as that and it's, and it's true i'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. disparaging them that they're incredibly powerful they're really big they're very successful but that is what happens yeah well 100 percent. and there was uh there was one person just watching my presentation there was one person that I just accidentally left out. And it was Angie, she's our lead UI UX designer. She was on our uh, little team slide, but I just totally blank. She's the one, her background is in design work for Boeing, Capital One, just some top brands. And when she came on board, she's employee number one, but when she came on board, she took my very crappy designs I had done myself and she made them look beautiful. The app you're looking at that you can download today is her work and we're very very thankful uh let's see here do you plan on releasing more financial services in the future the answer is yes we are formulating a 10 20 and 30 type of long-term roadmap um 10 years we want to be just the number one mobile lender 20 years we want to roll on an additional service maybe DeFi. i don't know banking um, this is very long term, but, you know, at the very least, we are mortgage experts and mortgage technology experts. So we're focusing on that first. But to answer your question, yeah, we, we'd like to rule the finance world from your phone 30 years from now. Kind of similar to how Amazon 
uh, rules all of buying, and they did it in like 25 years. I saw a very interesting statistic uh, that in 1950, I believe the average life cycle of a company was something like 100 years. And today, the average life cycle of a company is 15. So that really just goes to show you what the nature of disruption is doing to pretty much every area of, you know, every market area. But we have a tailwind, you know, again, this this has been called a contactless mortgage assistant. And we were working on the mobile technology long before COVID came along. But our current generation millennials, they love mobile apps. The one behind them, Gen Z, this is the first digitally native generation, the first generation to grow up with the iPhone. They don't remember a time before the iPhone. How crazy is that? So we've got an entire future, you know, just mobile app adopters. Will you have competitive rates compared to credit unions? The answer is yes. If we're automating uh, three, uh, about 3x three of loan production, then yes, we'll be able to offer lower rates, lower payments uh, as well. Uh, where did it go? You're not going to have loan officers either to pay. Yeah. And, and there was a second part of that question, Curtis, that said, um, since people tend to get loans from the same banks they have checking accounts in, how do you gain traction? And actually, the statistics of our industry prove that that is not the case. People do not go to the bank where they have their checking account uh, to get a loan. Um, independent mortgage bankers have 57% of the market today, and they have zero checking accounts. Yeah. They're legally not allowed to offer checking accounts. So without uh, naming the name uh, where I was, uh, it was a, a big bank, a Fortune 100 company, and I was on what's called portfolio. And these are the customers who you wrote a loan for in the, uh, the past or you have a current existing banking relationship with them. We only saved about 8% of those customers. We would lose about 90 to 92% of those customers to other lenders. And every bank in America has been working very hard to solve the problem of attrition. And this is, and it's common for every bank, but this is where B has another very unique competitive advantage with a company called Dommy Docs. And if you haven't looked up Dommy Docs, they are a home enablement platform. They're very new, they're getting a ton of traction, but what they do is they aggregate all the data on your home into a nice little hub on their website. So when B is done, closing you on your new home purchase, we're going to tell you that all of your closing docs are not are no longer emailed to you in a PDF that you're going to lose, or you're going to print up and put it in a, in a filing cabinet at your house, but all of your closing documents are in your brand new Dommy Docs account. Here's your login, log in and change your password. So in the future, Dommy Docs is going to hit you with an advertisement when rates drop or when you have enough equity in your home and your roof needs repair. And that little advertisement is going to have a little B logo on it. So this is going to maintain brand awareness post-close far more efficiently than sending out a postcard to you every month that you throw in the trash with the rest of the junk mail that comes from the bank now. Brian and... Uh, Steve, jump in there as well, because you're more familiar with Dommy Docs than I am. Well, you, you nailed it. Um, it, it, it it's an extremely powerful homeowner enablement platform that will um, provide you with the, the means and opportunity to consolidate in one place all of the information about your home, its finances, its insurance, everything else, in a secure, cloud-based, um, encrypted way. And all of that stuff in my own home, and I, full disclosure, I'm an investor in Dommy Docs as well, He's in the file cabinet to my right that you can't see, but I'm in the process of getting it onto the box. All right, let's see here. Next question, we be able to offer every state when this comes out, not how long it will take. So we're focused on a phase regional rollout, and is somebody whistling? There we go. Um, we're <laughs> that's okay, Brian. We're doing a, a regional rollout. We're going to start in our own backyard in Florida. I'm licensed in Florida. One of my partners has a branch manager license, so that's two of the ones you need to, you know, start lending in Florida. Uh, from there, we're going to expand regionally, 
and to the southeast. But eventually, yeah, uh, we will be in all 50 states. How long do you predict that'll take? Over the next four to five years. Last call for any questions. No, Domi Docs, D O M I D O C F. Well, thank you for asking that question because I realized as I read it, that is exactly what we both made it sound like. <laughs> Buying a home is the biggest purchase of the first time buyers. Many are uneducated about the whole process. As a whole, how will you reduce their doubts about managing such a large purchase through an app? Will you be leveraging real estate agents in any way? Yes. We are in the process of establishing a real estate a real estate agent distribution channel. Two of my partners are agents, and what B app is is it's essentially a contactless mortgage assistant. Uh, getting a three minute pre approval is a lot faster than getting one in thirty or forty five minutes if they have to call B of A. A lot of times they lose track of their buyer. Uh, their buyer may never return. So uh, some very influential. Um, uh, uh, CFOs and VCs have said that real estate agents is our play. You know, just by eliminating the loan officer and putting the loan officer in the palm of their hand um, so they can get their offer in before the next buyer in hot markets. So how will we reduce their doubts about managing such a large purchase? So this is going to go back to the simplification of what we're doing. Um, I am not a smart guy, but I understand how to communicate complex mortgage terms to a first-time buyer who can understand them. And when we're done sub or, uh, designing a process flow, I actually hand it over to my two 14-year-olds and have them read it. And if they can understand it, then we believe it's been simplified enough. So that, along with just buyer motivation for any kind of first-time buyers coming in the marketplace, uh, we think it's going to be sufficient. Um, the app has to be so simple that uh, anybody can use it. If it is not that simple, it has not been simplified enough and we have more work to do. But it's very simplified user experiences that change markets. Robinhood is so much easier to buy a stock in compared to E-Trade app or Scott Trade. Same thing for getting a ride through Uber. It's a lot easier and simpler than having to call the dispatcher and dealing with that. Same thing with Chime. And this principle is what we're after, but these users have already proven that they're adopting these very simple UXs. And millennials are the largest home buying group this year, and that's only going to grow. So we, we actually see uh, the answer to your question is, uh, is in simplification. I think there's one other piece to it as well, Curtis, and that is that first-time home buyers particularly skew younger, right? So it isn't people who look like me who are likely to be first-time home buyers. One of the things that we've discovered as an industry, which is why Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, who put out a lot of first-time home buyer education programs, are moving them to an automated online type of experience, is that people are more comfortable engaging with an app than they are with a human when they are talking about that very large first purchase. It's, just, it's very intimidating, and they feel, for lack of a better word, I'll say liberated, by being able to engage and get information and get answers without having to talk to somebody who knows more about it than they do in a process they find intimidating, which is the loan officer experience. Yeah. Brian, do y'all have anything to add before we wrap up? I would just say, uh, yeah, I appreciate appreciate everybody's time. Some really good, great questions, and uh, it's definitely an exciting time. And I think, uh, you know, from the amount of financing that's being raised in the space, and the amount of eyes, and the amount of new mortgages being taken out, uh, the amount of refis that are taking place as well, and you know, that's bound to continue. And I think that the market that you know you're uh, you're you're um, laying your your initial roots in and the in the florida market is great for this so um you know just excited and um obviously the team here has kind of demonstrated uh you know why why we have uh, such faith in in the vision and what you're doing here so it's all good stuff brian yeah i would say you know i'm excited about the simplification 
you know, of the whole process. And, you know, I think one of the last questions that you got, uh, Curtis, that you, that you read was, you know, what we're so used to large mortgage lenders, whether they're banks or, or independent mortgage bankers, they just beat up the borrowers, you know, as far as getting the information and qualifying for their loan. And it's really not that hard and it's fairly simple. And most people can figure out, you know, whether they qualify, you know, that whole disclosure thing and all that, that's separate. But, you know, is this a mortgage payment you can afford? My, my yes. expectation, my expectation yes. is that the first B borrower will be the first mortgage borrower to have not used a fax in the last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> because the large lenders are still asking you to fax your bank state. <laughs> Do people still fax? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm, I, mean, I don't say that hyperbolically. It's bloody true. My, my nephew bought a house six months ago and called me asking me on two separate occasions, why does your industry make me use a fax machine? I had to go to a UPS store to find one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. And, and part of that, somebody actually... Uh, Somebody asked me how Bitcoin plays into this. If I don't know if y'all saw this, but the city of Miami recently started accepting Bitcoin for like tax payments. So our our automation architecture is really just one big smart contract. If this happens, then this happens. And there's certain data uh, decisioning or validation points that happen on a decentralized network. Those are the ones where we trust. Like if we, we know if something can't go wrong there. So those we stick on the blockchain, that sort of thing. But at some point in the future, let's say Fannie comes out with its own crypto, who knows, or they just start accepting USDC, you know. So, yeah, there, there is the ability to kind of roll in um, any kind of crypto to what we're doing, although we're not using blockchain for any cryptocurrency purposes. We're strictly using it as a, a process improvement, um, you know, protocol, but no crypto at all there. The, the tip of the iceberg is e-notes, but there is a broad expectation in the mortgage industry that the notes themselves will be smart contracts before much longer. Yeah, they'll auto-execute. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Startup. We're going to close it out. Um, Startup is a production company, and I see George back there in my top left. <laughs> thank you, George and Jonathan. Uh, they're the production company that put this on. There's a lot of investors that participated in our first round, our pre-seed round, and I've never spoken to you directly. So, oof. Don't cry or cry. I, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. Um, we heard a lot of no's before you guys believed in us. And, and I can't thank you enough uh we're here we had a breakout 2020 because of you um all the progress we made um all the downloads you know you've really given me my my dream job so i'm thank i'm very thankful i was trying to get through that without crying um as some of you may know uh, last year at this time really with the outbreak of covid um, our company was on the line. You know, we had bootstrapped for almost two years. And, and then we opened up our pre-seed round and COVID hit. So <laughs> you start to start you wondering if it's fate. Anyway, um, but I really want to tell you tonight, you know, be prepared to take a great leap forward this year. You know, prepare to swim the English Channel and then drown in champagne. There's nine months between where we are right now and our big funding round, our second century pitch. And we're going to work every single month and every single one of them until we close that round. And it will be worth it. The mortgage industry as a whole has really slammed the door on innovation. So we're going to build the best mortgage app anybody has ever seen, and we're going to kick the door in. Every startup, is defined by the time they complete their multi-million dollar round. And when we close ours about nine months from now, the startup world's gonna know we've arrived. So I wanna thank you again, 
and I hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you, Curtis. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Thanks Curtis. Curtis.